Welcome back to Sports Banner. This is Bryce, and we're back with baseball. It's just me for this episode. Hopefully, we get more people to come in the future episodes. So we're going to start it off real quick, talking about the San Diego Padres and Washington National Series after the All-Star break. And man, it, it was crazy to say the least. So it all started pretty historic for the Padres, winning 24-8. to that's the fourth time this season that a team has scored more than 20 home runs in a single game. That's also the Padres' new record for home runs. So that was a very historic night for the Padres. A great job for them. But on the next night, it would be something completely different, but still noteworthy. Saturday, July 17th, 2021, there was a shooting in the middle of the Padres' Nationals game. Scared fans, they had to suspend the game until the next day. The result of that game was a decisive victory for the Padres as they defeated the Nationals 10-4. Right after that, they had their third scheduled game on the Sunday, the 18th, in which the Washington Nationals just edged out the Padres 8-7. So this is a very competitive division for the Padres. We're really talking about the NL West in which it's a three-team race for the first place. You have the San Francisco Giants at number one, followed by the reigning champions, the Los Angeles Dodgers. And then in third is the San Diego Padres. So for the Padres, they really need to kick it into high gear if they want to get that number one seed in the NL West. I mean, and there's always a chance they can make it in the wild card spot. But the number one spot in the division is how you can guarantee to get into the playoffs. Speaking of the Los Angeles Dodgers, kind of touching back on a story that was about maybe half a month old now is Trevor Bauer. And we're still kind of, (laughs) we're still seeing if the results of that case, obviously the evidence that is presented is terrible. It's terrible for Trevor Bauer, terrible for the victim. And I, my heart goes out for the victim. However, We cannot be so sure as to the results yet, but I just wanted to talk about kind of how the Dodgers are affected in this scenario, which Trevor Bauer has been on administrative leave for about half a month now. So uh, just a disclaimer, I'm only talking about just his absence, not talking about him as a person or what he means, like personality wise, this is strictly a player who's gone from the team and what is that effect for that team? Now, obviously, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers. They are, they have a, you know, quote unquote super team. They have a lot of good players, especially in the starting pitcher rotation. This season, Julio Urias and Walker Bueller have been two fantastic starting pitchers. Not to mention that Clayton Kershaw is on the injured list right now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And Kershaw is a three time Cy Young winner, as well as a former MVP. So I think for this Dodgers team, they're fine. Not having Trevor Bauer is okay. And it's good to see that some of the teammates have started really to declare that they're moving on. Whether Trevor Bauer returns to the team or not, it certainly seems really bad for Trevor Bauer. And I'm sure he might become a free agent no matter what the result is of this case. I promise this is the last negative news point of the episode Oh, Jacob deGrom is currently on the 10-day injured list for soreness in his right forearm, and that's terrible. He's arguably having one of his best years in his career. He is definitely known as the New York Mets' ace pitcher. He's by far the best one. He was an all-star this past season, chose not to play in order to you know rest because he's been on an all-time high in terms of win-loss record. His winning percentage is very impressive and I, I think that the Mets are finally putting it together. So Jacob deGrom's win-loss record is finally reflecting the team's help for Jacob deGrom. But also Jacob deGrom has had a very low ERA, just a little bit above 1.0. And he's top three in strikeouts, just behind Zach Wheeler, as well as Garrett Cole of the Yankees. So I think that Jacob deGrom, it's ultimately a minor setback, but he'll be back. And maybe he's going to win this Cy Young Award this year. Very compelling argument for Jacob deGrom to win the Cy Young Award. Who knows? Maybe he could win the MVP. Well, we'll have to see on that, though. I'm not going to fully back him up there. I'm only casual, so I don't really know if he deserves it. I haven't been following it 
too, too much, but I still try to keep my eyes and ears open in terms of MLB news. Last thing we're going to talk about, it's really not that major of a topic, but something that I know White Sox fans will rejoice in. It's Lance Lynn re-signing to the team. It's a two-year deal worth $38 million. And I think this is a good signing, even though Lance Lynn is 34 years old. I, I don't know the shelf life of MLB players yet. I haven't really encountered that. But I, I certainly think that two years isn't going to kill him, hopefully. I mean, he's having a career year with the White Sox. He received his second All-Star designation of his career. His first wasn't until, it was really in, early in his career. So it's been a first time in a long time for Lance Lynn. And so far, he's 9-3 and three with a 1.99 ERA. That's, of course, not pending today's contest in which he's facing the Minnesota Twins. Currently doing well as of this recording. We'll have to see how it ends. Maybe it could be 10-3 and three for Lance Lynn. And he has 105 strikeouts, which is 33rd best in the league as of yesterday when I did the stats. He's really good. I mean, he's really good. That's all you got to know. And they resigned him for two years, $38 million. I think it's a good signing for the White Sox. It's their best pitcher, and they just locked him up in a contract for two more years. He was going to be an impending free agent. So good for the White Sox for really taking action before the season even ends. But that is all we have for today. Hopefully next time we have more people, more talk, more banter. But we're going to have to hold off just for now. As thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. We definitely are going to have basketball content once the NBA Finals end. We're going to be talking about that. Maybe even pulling out some football. But also, stay tuned for the pro wrestling. It hasn't gone away. It's still coming. And with New Japan's Wrestle Grand Slam event coming up, it's going to be a huge show. And I'm definitely going to be here for it. We'll see who else is there for it. But if anything else, I'm going to be here. So, until next time, hopefully next week we'll be back with some more baseball. And we'll see you later.